a quick recap on a couple of our index laws uh, that we had a look at in year nine, and, and, and you kind of know these even though you might not know them as index laws. So if I've got something like a to the x times a to the y, or to put it another way, what if I had x squared times x cubed? Well, I, what would I do? I'd add those powers. Okay, that'd be a to the x plus y. Uh, similarly, but working in the opposite direction, if I had a to the x divided by a to the y, must have the same basis here. Can't deal with these if I say, for example, had x squared divided by y cubed. That doesn't mean we can deal with our powers in the same way. That means I'd have a to the x minus y. So if I'm multiplying, I add my powers. And if I'm dividing, I subtract my powers, uh, the second from the first. Um, the one that we're really going to look at today, if I've got something like a to the power of x, all to the power of y, well, that means I've got a to the x times y. Now, uh, the, the lesson title here is fractional indices, which is what I really want to think about. So we've just finished our topic on sort of shifting from our topic on thirds. This still is, is about thirds though. Um, let's take the root of a here. So I want to know what power that represents. Well, how do I get rid of that power? I get rid of a, a, a third um, by squaring it, okay? Which is the same as me saying root a times root a, or I could rewrite it as the root of a squared, or I could rewrite it back as the root a all squared. Either way, what's going to happen here is these guys are going to be cancelled out. Okay, and I'm left with just a or a to the one. Well, we know what this square power is here. That's a power of two. But if we have a look at this index law up here, so if I knew this power was two, and I end up with a power of one, well, two times what gives me one? Well, two times a half, or two halves give me a whole. So what I can say then from that is that the square root of a is the same as me saying that's a to the power of a half. So that's where our thirds kick back in here and how we get fractional indices. Anything that involves a third uh, of a non-square number or, or a square number for that matter is all about a fractional power. We're going to have a go at converting between these two forms here. So let's say I've got something like 4x, and I'm going to take the square root of that. Well, I can split that one up. I can turn that into root 4 times root x, which I could then say is, well, root 4 is 2, and root x is x to the half, so I could say that's 2x to the power of a half. Okay, um, now what if I had something like root x, and I'm going to take that to the power of 3. Well, that's the same as me saying root x times root x times root x. The first two here, root x times root x, will just give me x to the 1, just give me x. And then the last guy just hangs around at the end there. Now, the other way I could write that guy here is to say, well, actually, what if I turn that root x into x to the half? And then... I put the power of 3 out there. Well, that's the same as me saying 3 times a half, which is 3 over 2. Uh, or I could say that is x to the 3 over 2. So these two here are actually the same expression. Okay. This is third form. And this is with fractional powers. And that's something we've got to be comfortable going between those two forms. Okay. If we're asked to go between one form or the other, um, in year 11 and 12, when we start to look at calculus, we need to have those skills um, to go between a fractional power and a third or back again. Three more examples here involving fractional indices. Recalling that if I've got the root of x, uh, that's the same as me having x to the power of a half. Now let's think about what this is going to look like in our first example. Well, in our first example, I've got x to the 1 on top. 
over x to the half. Now what this ha what this means here is I've got x to the one divided by x to the half, which is x to the one minus a half, which is x to the half, or just root x. Again, we've got our answer there in index form or third form, depending on which you're asked. If you're not asked, you just do as you please. Um, but it all hinges there on the bottom being able to become uh, x to the power of a half. Uh, our second one here, I've got x to the 3 over 2, multiply x to the 1. Well, I'm just going to add my powers here. So I've got x to the power of 3 over 2 plus 1, which is x to the power of 5 over 2. We're not going to turn that one back into a third just yet. Need another little skill to do so. And our last one here, we've got 2 to the half multiplied by 2 to the half. That is definitely a half power on the second one. A couple of ways we can approach this one. But one big mistake that I think people can make here, when, when we've got algebraic bases, tend, people tend to keep things pretty simple. When we've got numeric bases, sometimes people just sort of make up their own rules and say, oh, well, let's I go 2 times 2 is 4, um, and then I add my power, so I get 4 to the 1, which is 4. No, it's not. So we could we could do this as a third problem. We could turn it into root 2 times root 2. Now we know root 2 times root 2 is the root of 4, or we could keep it as the root of 2 all squared, which is 2. Or we could go down the path of saying, well, that's 2 to the power of a half plus a half, 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. Same answer either way. But if we go and say it's 2 times 2 is 4, and then a half plus a half is 1, we get 4. Okay, We can't get different answers by doing this. We can get the square root of 4. Okay, we can get 4 to the power of a half, um, which is the square root of 4, which becomes 2. Um, but we've either got to treat this really as a surge problem or uh, correctly as an index problem. We can't just because we've got numeric bases. If this was root x or x to the half times x to the half, a to the half times a to the half, I guarantee you people would go and say, oh, that's x to the power of 1 or just x. Okay. Just because we've got numeric bases, we don't treat this any differently. There's just more that we can do with numeric bases that we can't always do with algebraic ones. I hope this has been helpful with fractional indices.